I'm not against something. If I have to prove somebody else wrong to be right, you know, then I'm then I'm really um, losing my power to that person. Really interesting being on a dating app. If you're meeting someone for the first time, it's really important to know what their political views are. And you you wouldn't think that would make you swipe right or left, but you know it does. <laughs> I've seen on Facebook where people are like, if you are voting for this person or that person, just unfriend me. I don't play the game. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> I just don't play the game. And if we can be observant of individuals, we like, we watch the kids, right? The kids can be acting up and you wonder what in the world spurred them on, triggered them to be all over the place. But if we can stop a minute and be observant without being emotionally reactive. You know, I really don't care what you look like and I don't care what your religion is and I don't care what, you know, what your uh, bank account looks like and I don't care if you're famous. And I really, really do not care who you're going to vote for in this election, but I do care if we're kind to one another um, be because at the end of the day, um, that's going to be the most important thing is how we treat each other, um, you know, especially during this election season when it's as crazy as it is. So I signed the pledge for peace. Um, it was super simple. It took me all of about a minute uh, to do it. Um, and now I'm just stop sharing it because it's important. I, I like that there's something out there that's teaching people how to talk about it and to yeah. make a conscious choice. So whatever people are doing uh, intentionally, uh, that vibe goes out in the world and the universe. So, you know, that's really important what we're thinking. So, and, and a lot of times when you sign something, you're like committing to that intention. So there's that extra layer of commitment to your choices. Uh, so you're choosing to be kind and you're intending that, you know, not responsible for how others receive it kind of lead by example. So, you know, it's a lot of time and energy to put into the initiative that you're doing. So, you know, appreciate what you're doing. This is a Global One um, project, as you know, and they've been doing a lot of things. They're always creating big ripples out into the world. Um, you know, they do the MLK 40 Days of Peace. Um, so this is really not new. Um, sign the pledge, be a part of it, and share it. At the School of Metaphysics um, in Missouri, which I was a part of for quite a while. They have a peace covenant and they have, you know, uh, different ceremonies that we do and have done. So it was not out of the ordinary for me. So just one more layer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for doing it and hosting and, and all the work that's going on behind the scenes. I've seen on Facebook where people are like, if you are voting for this person or that person, just unfriend me. Have you seen, have you guys seen those? And it makes my heart hurt. I don't play the game. No, nope. um, <laughs> I just don't play the game. Yeah. Like, plain and simple. I just I, want to share this book called emotional sobriety solutions by Bill Sterling. And he addresses some of the, the political rhetoric going on, the communication that is not real clear. Everybody gets an emotional trigger button somehow, somewhere, and just how to cut that. I just think uh, the emotional intelligence thing, EI is going to be the new buzzword, where AI is the buzzword now, uh, uh, artificial intelligence. I think EI, people are realizing there's not a high level of emotional intelligence right now in the, mm -hmm. in the country, let alone the world. So EI is the new buzzword. So that sounds like a great book, Carol. So I had put out a post the other day and just said, this election season, can we respect one another and step away from the fear, step away from the hate? Whether your side wins or loses, your greatest loss could be your relationship with a best friend, a coworker, or a family member. And for me, that's a price I'm unwilling to pay. That the more that we can put the message up and make people think about, you know, why do they want to post up? And why do they want everybody to think the way they think? Why does everybody have to agree Right? Could you imagine how boring? And I said this to my friend. I said, "Can you imagine how boring the world would be if we were all the same and everybody thought exactly the same thing and looked exactly the same way?" And and what's changed you know, is that I've been involved in politics almost my entire life because my dad was right. So I can remember we had political fundraisers at, a, at our house. I was yeah. ingrained into to it, and uh, I. But other than the people that came to my house and I knew like which party that was specifically for. 
I never knew how somebody voted. It wasn't discussed. I didn't know somebody was a Democrat or a Republican. I didn't, when I met somebody, it was like it wasn't a point of conversation. Now, I swear to goodness, my husband can put up a post about the flowers in our yard and somebody somehow will inject a political statement into it. You know, and it's like, I thought we were talking about flowers. Now, all of a sudden, we're talking about well, the elections again. So I think what's really changed is that um, social media has allowed us to say things and do things that we would we would not do typically to someone's face. And, and we live in a world where it's almost like, yes, there are people on the other end, but you don't, you don't see them. You're not, I, it's just a different isn't, relationship. Isn't there a pop song? I, I don't even know about um, people. Um, what you just said, they're going to, they'll be mean online where they wouldn't be to your face. And so it's like, it's, it's something in the lyrics about that, you know, because mm -hmm. there's so much uh, social media. So it's kind of funny, but um, really interesting being on a dating app at my age. Um, it's really <laughs> important, you know, politically, it seems to be a big issue in, you know, if you're meeting someone for the first time, it's really important to know what their political views are. And you, I mean, you wouldn't think that would make you swipe right or left, but you know, it does. <laughs> it does, yeah. Yep, so yeah, it used to be it was just you worried about religion a little bit or whether or not you wanted yeah. to have kids. And now it's like, what's your problem? It's like a huge factor, like warning, warning. They think differently than you. and But it's not just think differently. It seems to think extremely differently. I think that's where the pendulum is swinging so far that there's out of balance. And if you look at the laws of nature, everything's about balance. If you want a body in balance, knows what to do. Anything out of balance is not going to function. This political... Um, conversation is so out of balance there's no neutral seems like so well yeah there's no neutral and the media drives the extreme narrative mm -hmm. so um so the media is constantly going over to the far right and finding that extreme and going over to the far left and finding that extreme and then making everybody who really lives in the middle for the most part probably um mm -hmm. think that that's how everybody thinks on the other side and um yeah yeah, you find what you're looking for. So it is kind of interesting, the influence that it has. But I think that a tool would be when you start to, uh, when it feels good, move towards it. When it feels bad, move away from it. You and I always say that. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you kind of realize that your your emotional intelligence is being challenged, then you can step back and say, am I choosing fear or love? And I think that's a tool that you can start to use to say, I'm not going to play this game. Yeah, yeah. kind of like one of my secret sauces um, so if you take a minute and you look into somebody's eyes, the eyes never change from the day you were born to who you are now. Your body might have gotten bigger, but when you look into somebody's eyes, you're still a one-day-old baby. What wouldn't you do for that one-day-old baby? But if you can see the divinity in each other makes with the world a much better place. Question though, I think the biggest change is the media and the fact that it's on 24 seven and it's 365 and it's everywhere and you can't actually get away from it. Um, even when you try, it's it's hard to get away from it. And I, I've said I can walk out in my living room. My husband jumps from, from channel to channel to channel. Sometimes like between CNN or Fox or MSNBC, and I do not have to look at the TV and within five seconds, I already know what channel it's on. It's the divide. And um, I think the media drives a lot of that narrative. And I think actually it's part of the goal is to keep us divided. So I think we can choose not to let those forces that would like to see us all divided because we're weak. We're weaker when we're divided. We're stronger when we're together. So there's a couple layers. One is your yearnings, right? We all have soul's yearnings to be heard, to be seen, to be affirmed, to make a difference. That's on a soul level. Then we have the way we communicate that there's four different using colors. A blue is a person who um, it communicates, get to the point. He doesn't want to know the story. He doesn't want to know the agenda, um, any of that. Just get to the point. The green is somebody who's very well organized, like a receptionist, a secretary. Everything's got to be in detail. So her comfort zone, she can't make a decision and get out of her fear 
of making the wrong decision if she doesn't know exactly what the agenda is, what the sequences are. Then the yellow is a visionary. Now the visionary, they have a bigger picture, but the person who would irritate them the most would be a green who's so detailed because the visionary doesn't want to know the detail. And then the red is the warm, fuzzy person. That's my side. And the warm, fuzzy side likes the kumbaya. Everybody participates and finds the way to harmonize and get everybody talking in the right direction. That's one layer of communication preferences. So it's not an attack on one or the other. And if we can be observant of individuals, we like, we watch the kids, right? The kids can be acting up and you wonder what in the world spurred them on, triggered them to be all over the place. But if we can stop a minute and be observant without being emotionally reactive, for years I have studied Bill's communication preference cards. So instead of me reacting to his blue, get to the point, when he's talking to me, get to the point, I'll just tell him your blue is out. <laughs> I like that. That's because it's, it's not an attack on him. Yeah. It's an awareness. It's an awareness. That, uh, times of disconnect. And right. people are not listening. And I feel like everybody runs around with a megaphone and nobody's listening. I guess the right. question is, um, how do we how do we get people to want to, you know, engage again in a way where we're listening to one another, right? God gave us two ears, one mouth for a reason. So how do we get back to that? Because right now I, I feel like nobody's listening to each other. I think what I've been hearing lately is, in you know, the power over others is the, the when we give our power away to the government or whatever it is, uh, you know, people who have power over you, but power with others is a new thing to focus on. So it doesn't really matter who's in charge if you haven't given all your power away, you, if you have more power with others. So if you can focus yes, on what yes. you can do as a community, what you can do, it, you know, Cheryl and the kitchen table, the family, the, right. the immediate community, your immediate um, council, uh, things like that, that really can make a difference locally where you don't feel helpless. Like, oh my God, uh, I'm so fearful if the other side wins, uh, we're right. all going to die. I've You're heard people say, right. we're not all going to die, no matter who's in president. And so take that fear yeah. away and, and come return to love. Right. Yeah, because fear will do. Fear does divide us and uh, makes me think of Finding Nemo in the show where all the um, fish realize that they can actually break free if they all work harmoniously together to break the net. And so they all start swimming down and swimming down and swimming down and eventually they break the net and it frees them all because that's the power when they work together. So I think as, as more and more people maybe start to realize that, um, that coming together, working together is actually more powerful. There's power in what you're for. You don't have to ask me what I'm against if you know what I'm for. And that's where their power lies is being for something, um, not against something. If I have to prove somebody else wrong to be right, you know, then I'm then I'm really um, losing my power to that person.